Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today's video is an autopsy of a Black Rain Ordnance Spec 15. This is a factory built rifle from what I understand. This is a friend of mine. He took this rifle on a trade. Took it out. Wouldn't fire. Now normally we would start digging into stuff and we would try to see what's wrong with it. So before we do that, we're just going to go ahead and load some ammo up in it. And we're going to take the internet's advice. We're just going to run it, bro. If it blows up, then people who don't like me will be happy because I'll be dead. If I live, then just live with disappointment. So we're going to load this thing up. We're going to test it. We're going to take it over to the test trap. So we're going to pause the video. And we're going to see if we can get this thing to fire successfully. And if it doesn't, or if it does, we're still going to take it apart and try to identify why he's having problems with this gun. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, we're back. We have the barrel in the test trap. We have two rounds loaded up into a 20-round magazine. We have to test with a 20 because YouTube rules says that if we test with anything higher capacity, we're bad people, and they could take our channel down. So we don't want to do that. Um, as you can see, the bolt carrier has the engraving of black rain on it. The upper receiver is listed as black rain. The rail system, everything on this, from what I understand, is factory. Now the first thing that I noticed when I picked it up after I made sure that it wasn't loaded is that the buffer tube is loose. You can see that they did attempt to stake it here, but it's still loose. So some people will say, well, if you stake it, it won't come loose. Well, they only staked it in one spot. It needs two. And staking doesn't save you if you don't torque the nut properly or if you have poor or low thread class interface between the lower, the castle nut, and the receiver extension. So even though it's staked once or twice, it might still shoot loose if things are not quite right. That being said, um, we're still going to shoot it. This can cause reliability problems. If the tube can move, the bolt carrier can bind up. But let's go ahead and lock the bolt open, load it up, and give it a run. We are hot. Test trap is on. Our eyes and ears are in, so if I talk a little louder, I apologize. And here we go. Test fire. Didn't look like it cycled completely. One round still left in the magazine. And we have brass in the chamber. Let me try to catch it. There we go. Now I can see by looking at this brass, it might be hard to see in the video. But there is what's referred to as frosting on the brass. You can see small scratches and a change in color, which means that the chamber is a little rough. Sometimes that in itself can cause extraction problems if it's bad enough. It will bind the casing to the chamber walls and prevent it from clearly leaving the chamber under pressure. So uh, maybe that's the problem, but let's take a look inside the gun. I don't think this is it. It's not that bad. But let's go back over to the bench. We're going to pause the video and uh, crack it open, take a look. All right, everyone, we're back at the bench. We've got a little bit of water on the front of the gun from the test trap. Um, you can see right here that it is also a black rain barrel. It has their marking on it. So just so you can see, it's all at least black rain marked parts. Some people will say, well, if it's not a factory gun, how can you blame them? Just trying to show that from what I understand, it's a black rain factory built gun. Maybe somebody messed with it. This is the second owner from what the current owner says. Um, so let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look. All right, let's look at the low receiver first. As I showed you already, the buffer tube is loose. That can cause cycling problems. Let's take a look at the buffer assembly. So if you don't know this, charging handle can be used to pop your retainer out. This tab right here, hit here, and instead of busting your thumbnail or something else, you can just push the detent and the buffer assembly comes out. It does appear that the retainer is timed properly, so that's not about to jump out. That's a good thing. The bolt catch has proper tension. Magazine catch assembly feels pretty good. It's not over tightened here. There is lube on it. The selector moves, has a nice distinct feel between safe and fire, it's not binding up, the safety does hold, 
So these are good things. This is the bad thing so far. Um, let's go ahead and check the buffer assembly out. So just looking at this buffer, I can say that this spring is no good. Um, it looks short, but let's see if I'm off. So we're going to go to our yardstick here. And our spring is just under 10 inches. And the carbine buffer system should be 10 and a 16th to 11 and a quarter. So we're at least a 16th of an inch short on this. What does that mean? That means that the bolt carrier might have difficulty chambering rounds out of the magazine because we have not enough tension. So spring's definitely bad. That should be replaced. Buffer. Roll pins not sticking out bad. Not heavy damage on the buffer. It's not heavy, heavy buffer mark, so it's just a standard carbine weight. But that is concerning right here. It's probably hard to distinguish this in the video, but that, that bumper, that pad on this is extremely soft. I don't know if you can see how much I'm deflecting this, but a good buffer is almost like a hard piece of plastic. So what's happening here on this one is when this gun recoils, this pad is probably collapsing more than it should. And when the bolt carrier goes back into the receiver extension or buffer tube, it's likely to crash into the lower. Let's see if we have a mark. And we do. Right there at 12 o'clock, right where my finger just covered up. The carrier key is striking the lower receiver under operation. Let's check our gap real quick. We have a gauge for that. So let's put the buffer assembly back in. The spring has no factor here. It's an, it's an assembly of the buffer, the tube, and the carrier. So we'll put our buffer assembly back in. We have our trusty gauge, which you can also replace with two U.S. quarters. Basically, two U.S. quarters should fit in between here and the back of the carrier key. Let me get the carrier. What did I do with it? It's right here. Back in, and gauge won't fit. So this is why it's striking. I have to back it out a little bit to get it to clear, but look, it's stuck. It will not go in there. So the gap isn't sufficient. What can you do to fix this? Um, you can take the buffer tube off, rotate it one more turn in. Usually though, it'll interfere with the retainer. So then you have to do a little bit of gunsmith in there. You have to basically machine the face of the buffer tube out so you can get another full turn out of it. Or you can just put a quarter in the tube and that'll limit its rearward travel. Some people don't like that. So this is some problems out of the gate. Loose tube, carrier key striking. And when I was feeling that carrier, something didn't feel right. So let's go back to it. Look at that. That's not supposed to happen. So we have what I would say is the improper grade screws. Staking doesn't look too bad. But this is one of the problems. It looks that the firing pin retaining pin, yep, that's sort of beat up. That's usually an indication of a gun that's overgassed or a gun that has an inefficient seal between the tail of the bolt and the inside of the carrier. When that happens, it wants to blow the firing pin out of the carrier under pressure. And it can damage this. So the gun's overgassed and the bolt carrier is moving too fast and it's slamming the firing pin into that on the rearward cycle or it's blowing gas past things and trying to blow the firing pin out of the bolt carrier like this. So these are some problems. All right, what else with the lower can we check? Let's go ahead and break out some gauges real quick. Let's check the fire control group holes. Pass this there. You guys are wondering what I'm doing. I'm slightly unseating these so I don't have to drive them all the way out. And I'm gauging these holes. This is a tool that I invented. All right, let's uh, check the magwell. Magwell's undersized. It will not take the USGI magwell gauge. This means that it might be sensitive to certain types of magazines. Usually means they won't drop free. Some people will debate this and say, this isn't important. If it drops metal mags, then it's fine. Well. If it drops metal mags in a classroom environment where everything's clean, that might be fine. But when the real world happens, magazines sit out and they get hot. They swell a little bit, depending on their construction. Maybe there's a little bit of dirt on the magazine. Um, those things can cause a magazine that's just about to bind in a classroom setting to bind in the real world. So you do not want a tight magwell. 
So Magwell fails. Uh, fire control group, control group holes pass. Let's uh, check front and rear takedown holes. I didn't feel a lot of slop, but I'll check it anyway. That passes, that's good. Let's go to the upper. That passes, that fails. Now this one is okay to fail because normally upper receivers have an elongated hole that takes into account for low receivers having a change between these two distances makes them more universal and you can actually see this hole isn't quite round that's normal so I'm not going to say that that's wrong on their part you'll see this on a Colt you'll see it on an FN it's normal it doesn't always take this gauge here which means they're, they've been a little bit generous with it but that's normal nothing to be concerned about I'm going to pop these two pieces together and do a couple more checks with my feeler gauge these pins are a little tight Get my feeler gauge and put it here. That shouldn't close and it doesn't. I'm going to put it here and the pin should not go in and it doesn't. Checking to make sure that the upper and lower aren't sitting too far apart. And it also should not fit in between here where the receiver sets engage like that. So that passes. Seeing a lot of problems here with this gun so far. It's probably going to be a long video. Let me get a chamber flag. These pins do not want to come out. Hit it with a rubber hammer. There we go. Alright, so lower, we're already seeing that not a good buffer, not a good spring. Tube is loose. Carrier key striking, that's probably what caused this to loosen up. It strikes repeatedly and it wants to loosen those screws. Normally they'll break. But that's not good. Uh, let's check. Lift here. We're about one thousandths under on how much that lifts. That means that it's more likely to slip off of the bolt when the gun is jarred, when the bolt is locked open. 001 is not a huge deal, but it is not lifting what I like to see. Let me drive these pins back in. Alright, tension on that's good. These hammer and triggers, uh, the pins, they look a little odd. They're very sharp on the edge. They're okay, but not liking what I see. Let me pop these pins out completely so I can take a close look at the springs. That's too big. Let me get a brass punch. Dropping everything today. Looks like it took a little bit of a set. See, it has sort of that bent motion on it. They should be more flat, especially when they're new. This gun has some use, so I would say this is okay, not optimal. We didn't have any failures to fire, so nothing to be concerned about right there. Just take the trigger out. We may have to take the pistol grip off to get the trigger out. We will. So we'll come back to that if we have to, but the sear surfaces look good. Pins don't look bad. Not too concerned about that. But that tube's definitely got a problem. All right, let's see what else I'm missing. Front and rear. Didn't take this. Didn't take this. We're good there. All right. So far, just a magwell and this stuff. Let's put this off to the side. start checking stuff in the upper receiver. Your lower receiver has a lot to do with how your upper works. A lot of people think it's not important. These things, especially here, can cause big problems. So I'm going to put this off to the side and we're going to get into the upper. Alright, 
Let's check out the charging handle. Doesn't look like it's bent. The tab here doesn't look too excessively worn. If these get rounded out really bad here, that's a problem. If you look inside of the charging handle, you can see that there is some contact marks. And that's a telltale sign that something has loosened because the carrier key is basically trying to rub against the inside of the charging handle. check and make sure that it latches properly. It does. So I'm going to say charging handle passes. The dust cover though, not too good. Spring's not holding it in place. I don't think anyone took this apart, so maybe this was wrong out of the gate. Maybe someone did mess with it, but the spring has jumped out and it needs to be reinstalled. And again, this is their product, so I don't believe anyone took it off and changed it. Forward assist roll pin. Looks like it took some uh, pretty gnarly hits. Let's see if those ratchets work. Yep. All right. Let's uh, put the carrier off to the side. Being a little violent, but it's kind of mood I'm in today. I've been waking up and seeking violence every day. If you guys have been watching what I'm posting on the business page and such lately, not necessarily trying to get people riled up, but just to give some free tips of advice. Um, some people take it the wrong way, and hey, that's just how some people are. Uh, let's get this apart. So let me find the right bit to get the rail off. I'm thinking it's this one. And I don't recommend you do this unless you have some experience, but I'm going to use a power tool here. Because in my world, time is money. Not very tight. Doesn't appear to be any thread locker on them. The reason I'm saying don't use this if you don't have experience is because you can end up stripping the bit stripping the fastener and these can, things can be very difficult for someone that is not experienced in moving broken or stuck or stripped fastener. Rail systems off. Alright this has a clamp on gas block. It appears to be their product. Let's go ahead and uh, get this off so we can gauge out the gas port. This looks like it's the right size, and let me get my little screwdriver handle. At least they were tight, but it doesn't feel like there was any thread locker, regardless of the, the, the gas system you use, unless it's using pins. Any type of screw should have a thread locker here. Some people will use high temperature red, some people will use blue, I wouldn't recommend that. I like to use rock set because it's not susceptible to loosening under high heat. Um, so, don't like this. That's tight, so we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, convincing. Brass punch, I'm going to take this over with the device. Lock it in place, and I'm going to try to get this thing moving. Brass punch so I don't damage anything. There we go. All right, let's gauge out the gas port. It's a rather large gas port. This is a 16 inch barrel carbine length gas system. And if I just had to take a guess by looking at it, I'd say it's in the high 80. 080 range or the low 90 range. Let's see what we get. Let me get the pin gauges. Let's go on the high end and work our way down. Let's go to 90 and see if it fits. See where I pulled it from just so you don't think I'm making up stuff. 90 don't fit. 
All right, maybe I was off there. Let's go to 89. 89. Boom, 89 gas port. For a carbine length gas system, 16 inch barrel. Mil spec or TDP is about 0 0.062. So this thing is about 50% larger than it should be. It's a lot more gas coming out of that system. So that's a problem. Another tool because I want to take this flash hider off. Put my Midwest URR in here and we're going to remove the flash hider. And we have alignment with the barrel extension, at least that's good. That means they didn't clock the barrel in the upper when they were assembling it. I'm going to take the flash hider off so I can take a look at this gas block because it doesn't feel right. washer everything looks good there let's get this clamp on gas block off and I was right it's not something that I can really convey in the video let me see if I can lock this down but this gas tube very loose in the gas block so I'm not liking what I see here People will complain about the fouling they see here, and they worry about it. This will foul up, and then it basically clots and stops. But this is never going to seal up completely due to how inefficient the seal is right here. Let me grab a wrench. I'm going to check and see if the barrel nut was tight. Let's see if it grabs these teeth. Nope. I need a different wrench. Let me find something. I don't think a guy's lead will fit on ALG. It doesn't. And that doesn't fit. Let's see if any of my PRIs fit it. I got a lot of wrenches. I can never remember all the unique combinations without looking at notes. So it's just easier for me to grab some random wrenches and see what fits. We really don't have to take the barrel off yet. Oh, we still have other stuff. There we go. This one will work. This one is for DPMS Knight's Armament. They probably have a specialty tool for this, but this is the one that's fitting into these notches. Check the other side. Yeah, that didn't work. Let me put the tools back. This is one of the benefits of sort of being a tool hoarder. Sometimes you just need that oddball tool that you might not have used for years. Um, this one's sloppy, but it'll work. Uh, I'm not going to loosen this yet, but I'm going to give it a little bit of force to see if it was loose, and it's not, so that's a good thing. We don't want a loose barrel nut. He didn't complain of poor accuracy, so I don't think anything's loose here. Let's check the feed ramps. Uh, what did I do with my cotton swab? Here we go. And this one we're going to have to get some weird angles, so my wife can help me here. Let me try to get some light in here. 
Does that help? All right, good. And we have some feed ramp problems. I'm going to try to let you guys see this. Let me break this so we can get a good angle. But let's say this is the tip of a bullet coming out of the magazine. And there we go. It's hanging up. I'm going to see if I can get... Right there. It's basically taking material off of it. And if we can't get a good focus, I apologize. This is a really difficult thing to video. But these ramps are pretty bad. Some people will argue that this is not important. They'll say that you should use different magazines that feed at a higher angle. That can be a fix for a gun with this problem. But what if your lower receiver has a tight magwell and it doesn't like those magazines? What if the follower on that particular design of magazine doesn't consistently engage your bolt catch? There's always other variables that you have to take into account. This is a, this is the sum of parts. It's not just one piece. So if one piece is off and you need a specialty piece to make it work, that other part might not work with other variables. So just got to take that into account. Some people think I'm looking for perfection. I'm not. I'm just looking for good. But this isn't good. This is not optimal. So some projectiles will hang up on these feed ramps. So this is going to require a fix in my opinion. So right now we have a bad gas block, we have feed ramp overhang, we have a bad dust cover spring, we have an over gas barrel, we have a loose carrier key, we have a bad buffer and spring, we have a loose buffer tube or receiver extension, we have what else so far? The tight magwell. And let's see. Yep. So let's check the bolt here. So, one thing some people will overlook when they hear me talking about the efficiency of bolt carriers, and I use my gauges here to check that. This is my own recipe. Um, there are gauges that you could use that follow the TDP, technical data package, and they're close to this but they're not quite this. Um, the TDP is looking for stuff that's going to work when you account for all the other parts of the recipe acting in synchrony together. This stuff is more of the stuff that you're going to see in the commercial side of the world. So when you have all these different variables with bolt carrier groups and different parts, this is what I found works the best if you can understand the efficiency of your gas system. When gas comes out of the port here, this one's got a lot of gas coming out, a whole lot of gas. That's going to cause the bolt to unlock and move faster than it should. Sometimes that will cause the gun not to work at all because it's trying to extract too soon. Sometimes it will outrun magazines. Sometimes you'll have failures to eject or failures to chamber due to bolt carrier speed. It can be all these different unique issues that happen when it comes to the malfunction you experience. This carrier key was probably loose for a long time and the gun probably worked. And the reason being it probably worked is because you had a very over gas gun with a gas block that leaked. So that bled some of that excessive gas off. Then it's coming down the tube, and now you've got a loose carrier key, and now it's leaking here. I'm going to assume, based on my experience, that this bolt carrier is also inefficient. Now, the owner did send me the Sons of Liberty bolt carrier group because he sometimes listens to me, and uh, he wanted something that he thought would gauge that a little better, and these generally do. So we're going to put this into his gun, before we do any changes to this, to see if we can get it to work. Sort of what I do when I'm troubleshooting anyway. I won't always break everything down. I'll just put a known good bolt carrier group and test the gun. But let's rip this apart and see what we can find inside as far as efficiency goes. All right, let's check the tail seal. Let's see if it'll take the red. It does. So that means the interface between the tail and the hole in the carrier is not good. Let's check the tail with our ring gauges. It won't take the no-go. So the bolt is not bad, but the hole in the carrier that it sits in is leaking gas this way when it pressurizes. Let's check the gas ring run, where the gas rings ride. Uh, let's go green, green, yellow, red. It's got an inefficient gas ring run. So this gun has what I would call a barrel problem because it's 
huge gas port, but the inefficiencies in other parts of the system are sort of helping it out. Let's check the bolt support. This has nothing to do with gas. It's a little bit sloppy. That just controls on how much movement the bolt has. Not a big deal. Let's check the carrier key. Even though it's loose, it's passing the gauging. Staking on it is not bad. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad. It's just got what I call some bad screws. Um, it may not have been torqued properly, but it could have been torqued properly, and from it crashing into the lower, it loosened it. Even properly installed screws, the proper grade, properly stake, can come loose or break when it, this is crashing into the lower when the gun cycles. So we have an inefficient bolt carrier. Let's check some more parts of the bolt. It's got the insert and the donut. What I would consider not so good of a spring. The claw feels pretty good here. The gas rings, they look like they're okay. Will they pass the test? Yes. Let's check. Cam pin hole. Starting to stretch a little bit. Got to go all the way in the count though. Yellow don't go in. That's good. Bolt face. Takes the bolt face gauge. That's good. Let's check the ejector. The ejector doesn't feel great. Doesn't feel like it's going to fail though. The ejector does have a nice bevel on it. I'm going to check the firing pin hole. Let's see if it passes the gauge. It does. Let's check protrusion. Got to find the firing pin. Thirty one, that's good. So the bolt's not bad. Still got to check headspace and a couple things on the barrel, but uh, not bad so far. Let's check the threads on this barrel. Owner's not going to suppress this to my knowledge, but it doesn't hurt just to give it a good once over since we already have it. That's the wrong way. Threads pass. Let's check for muzzle erosion. It's got a good bit of erosion. It's almost at the end there. That doesn't mean that it fails, it just got a good bit of erosion. And let's check the straightness gauge. Straight up and down. We're going to drop this in and it should fall straight through. And it does. Throat erosion gauge. Let's see how I many I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the erosion is a one. Not bad. Check for bolt magnetism. Thought we had a winner there, but it was just oil, I think. We're good. All right, and then let's check the barrel for headspace. We're going to use this extension gauge. It should go in and rotate. does not. Barrel has slightly short head space. If I had to guess it's got 14636 which is 223 head space. Let's just check it. Um, I'm gonna have to tighten these up to give this a good test. I'm gonna go grab a bit. Get one from another bench. Be right back. Tighten these up so we can give this a good test with headspace gauges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five
one four six four six. This is five five six go. Well, not close. Oh, there it went. Tight. So that's good. We have a little bit of wear on the lugs. We have a little bit of wear on the lugs from it being used. So that helps out. Let's see if it'll pass with the Sons of Liberty bolt carrier. It will not. I'm pushing on it hard. Oh, there it went. So that's at the very outer limit of what I would call acceptable. The military book says that it's okay to use about 8 pounds of force to close that, and I probably put 20 on it. So this barrel's right at the edge of having short head space. So, okay with this bolt. Alright, let's pause the video and let me reorganize the bench and we'll be right back with the summary. Alright everyone, we're back. Got a little bit of organization going on here. Still chaos to me, but at least I can uh, organize my thoughts here. So, quick summary of what we found. Really large gas port. Carrier key is crashing into the lower. Carrier key was loose. These screws, no thread locker, and very loose gas tube in here. We have feed ramps in the upper receiver that overhang. We have a tight magwell. The bolt catch doesn't lift completely, so it could cause issues with some magazines. Um, what else do we have? We have an inefficient carrier, but it doesn't mean that it's bad, especially with the problem that we have with the barrel. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put this gas tube back on here, and we're going to take Sons of Liberty bolt carrier. We're going to do a separate physical autopsy on this one, see what we find. But we're going to see if the gun will work with this. If I had to guess, I'd say that the gun is going to behave like it's really overgassed, and generally that means that it throws the brass forward. And then if that's what happens, then we're going to put some heavier buffers and springs in here to see if we can tame it down. I'm thinking with this size gas port, we will not be able to tame it. So I'm going to report back to the owner after we're done with this video of what we found. He's going to watch the video, I'm sure. And we have to take consideration of how we want to fix this barrel problem. Do we want to replace the barrel with one with a smaller port? Do we want to put something like an adjustable gas block on here, which can be another failure point? Um, or do we want to put like a restricted gas tube on here like BRT makes? So I'm going to throw those options at him, let him decide what he wants to do, and then we're going to do a part two where we actually get this gun working properly. But I'm going to throw it together real quick, off camera, and then I'm going to show you me putting this in here, and we're going to test it again and see what we get. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, we're back. I left the bolt carrier group apart because we're going to test it with the Sons of Liberty. And I'm also going to change the buffer and spring because we don't want to take a good bolt carrier or a possibly good bolt carrier and put it into the lower that allows the bolt carrier to travel back too much because it's going to allow the carrier key on this one to start striking the lower. So what I did was I put some spacers in here already. Looks like they're not laying in there flat. I'm going to put a good buffer and spring in here, and I'm going to check my gap. There we go. And I'll see if our gap is right, and it is now. I'm using a washer, but I normally use a quarter. I just couldn't find any quarter, so I wanted to get moving with the video. So, non-heavy buffer, standard spring, and a Sons of Liberty bolt carrier group. I'm not going to put the rail system on. I'm not going to uh, put the flash hider on. We don't need that. And let's see what we get with function. I'm going to get my eyes and ears on, and we'll be right back at the trap. All right, everyone, we're back. We have two rounds into our magazine. We have. Sons of Liberty bolt carrier in here. We have a new spring and a new buffer, standard weight buffer, standard weight spring, and let's see what we get. 
If I had to guess, this thing's going to throw the brass forward hard with a lot of authority, which usually indicates, not always, that the gun is overgassed. So we're probably going to have ejection pattern somewhere between here and here. Let's see what we get. Test fire. Right forward. Right about here if you didn't catch it. Let's see if we get it again. Maybe it'll hit my hand. Yep. So we have about 130 ejection. So we're going to keep the camera running. I'm going to crack this open. And I'm going to put A Springco Red, which was one of the heavier springs that Alan from Springco makes, and an H3 buffer. And let's see if we can tame this gun down a little bit. Some people will argue that ejection pattern is not important. And it's not always the most significant thing, but it does tell you a little bit about how your gun's running. Ejection pattern also is based off a gun that has a shell deflector. You're, you're judging how things are bouncing off of this. So if you have a slick side upper, it's going to change the way you're going to eject sometimes. Just a little tip. I can feel it's a lot stiffer. Let's get two rounds and see if our ejection pattern changes. I don't think it will. This gun is so overgassed, and we actually made the problem a little bit worse because we put an efficient bolt carry in here. I haven't gauged it yet, but generally Sons of Liberties are efficient. Um, so we made the bolt care move even faster than the previous one did. Let's see if it's the same pattern. Here's where we were before. Hopefully it moves more towards 3 o'clock or rearwards. Test fire. Maybe I didn't change it. I didn't. Same place. No change. Same place, no change. We do have bolt lock. But essentially, outside of maybe a super, super, super heavy custom buffer, we can't tame this down. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to the owner, just to recap, to talk about either a restricted gas tube from BRT, an adjustable gas block, or a replacement barrel. Probably the most cost-effective thing is going to be the gas tube. They usually run about $70. A good adjustable gas block, if you are willing to use one, usually start at about $100. And a replacement barrel, a good one's going to be about $200. So the most cost-effective option is going to be the gas tube. Let's come back over to the bench. And I want to give you a summary of what we're going to do. So regardless, we're going to reinstall the carrier key, put good screws, Try to stake this. If not, we're going to use a new one. We're going to put a new extractor and ejector spring, spring codes, in here. I'm going to put new gas rings on it, and our bolt carrier will be essentially rebuilt. I'm going to fix the feed ramps. Even if he doesn't want an adjustable gas block, we're putting a better gas block on here, something that is going to be uh, set screw model. The clamp ones aren't bad, but they are less rugged in relation to a set screw model. Now, if we put a set screw model here, I will dimple the barrel. This barrel is not dimpled. You do want to dimple in the barrel to lock the gas block in place. Um, so it's going to get a new gas block either fixed or adjustable. It's going to possibly get a new gas tube if he takes that route. Um, we're going to retighten the castle nut. We're going to stake these things properly so it'll get a new end plate because they already staked it once and it won't line up in the same place. And uh, that will all be in video two once I talk to the owner so we can take a, an approach of how to fix this on his end. In the end, uh, oh, we also have to fix this too. In the end, um, when everything's rebuilt, I would have no problem owning this gun with this bolt carrier and whatever method we use to fix the gassing system, um, but not without doing the work. The feed ramps are a problem. We didn't see any feeding problems on this one, but different magazines may give different results. Different ammo may give different results. But uh, this gun's definitely got a lot of problems. It needs some tweaking. 
if it was built right out of the gate and didn't have such a gas port, it wouldn't be on this bench. The gas port basically beat itself apart. Possibly the reason that the buffer tube is also loose. That excessive recoil wants to shock this thing loose. And that's probably why it's loosened up. So why do they use a big gas port? I can't answer for the company that made it. Um, what I can tell you is a lot of companies do generally go larger on the gas port because weak ammo requires more gas to flow through the system to cycle it. So if you have customers that generally buy weak ammo, you want a larger gas port. But if you're shooting hotter ammo, then the gun behaves poorly with a big gas port. Now some of their inefficiencies sort of balance things out, but all in all, um, I'm not too upset about the individual components and their specifications, but the way that it was put together, if it had been done better and it had a slightly smaller gas port, we wouldn't be here on the bench today. Uh, as always, this is an example of one. So that doesn't mean that everything that Black Rain makes is going to have these problems. Um, if this is their standard for gas ports, which in my experience it usually is, uh, not a good thing. But again, if you're shooting really weak ammo, this might be uh, something you want. I don't. But uh, as always, stay tuned for video two. I hope you found this video educational. And thanks for watching.